Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the channel if you're new here. I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. In this week's video I'm going to be renewing the contact breaker on this 1990s Honda CG125. It's a points ignition system, points are commonly known as contact breakers as well um, and it's basically a little mechanical switch which runs on a cam inside the flywheel. And the reason I'm going to be replacing it is because the bike has been taking ages to start just recently. And I think it might be because the points are dirty and we need to adjust the point gap and the ignition timing as well. Now what leads me to believe that it's the contact breaker that's faulty on this bike is the fact when I first got it, it was a non-runner and the component I had to replace to get it running was the ignition coil. And part of the ignition coil was a condenser. The condenser's job is to prevent arcing across the points and if that goes faulty you get arcing across the points it causes them to go dirty and pitted and i think that's what's happened with this bike so we can take it off replace the contact breaker you can either clean up the one that's already on there or replace it um, it was eight pounds for a replacement one so i'm just going to put on a brand new one we're going to set the points gap and the ignition timing and hopefully after that, it should run as sweet as an up. And hopefully you'll learn something from this video and you'll find it useful. And if you do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. It's completely free. And if you click the alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. So with that being said, let's get on with the job. Replace this contact breaker and I'll show you how to set it up. So first of all, I'm going to remove the flywheel cover on the left hand side of the engine. It's just four bolts holding the flywheel cover on. You may have to remove the gear lever to get to this bolt down here, but I don't tend to put that one in. I just put these three in to make it easier to remove for maintenance. Next, we want to remove the flywheel. And to do that, we need to loosen off the flywheel nut or the crankshaft nut here. That's 17 mil. And as you can see, when we try and turn it, it just spins a flywheel. So what we have to do is lock the flywheel. And a little trick for doing that is get yourself a spanner in here. And lock the flywheel against the gear lever or this foot peg here. And then we should be able to loosen this nut off. gonna be tight there we go loosen the flywheel nut off here I've got a special tool for removing the flywheel let's try this out I've never used it before but hopefully it should work just unscrew this it's got two different sizes here so it fits different flywheels but this is a standard um, size so it should fit which it does, we'll screw that in there. It's a left hand thread, so lefty tighty righty loosey. This spanner here is locked against the peg. And now we can tighten the center bolt up and that should pull the flywheel off. There we go. Brilliant little tool to have in the toolbox. There we go. So within the flywheel, we've got a couple of windings here. One's for the lights and charging the battery, and the other one is for the ignition coil. And this little switch here is our contact breaker, also known as points. And this runs on a cam, so as the flywheel rotates, the cam's like an egg shape and that causes this switch to open and close and that denotes when the spark jumps across the plug. So this is how we set up our ignition timing. And at the moment you can see the points are really dirty. I'll get a close up once I've got it off. Um, and there's also water in there as well, which isn't good. Let's loosen off this screw at the back. And 
disconnect the wires from here. We have a look at the old contact breaker. You see the points are very dirty. And when they contact, it's not very even. See that gap there? They should contact nice and flat. And the spring actually feels a little bit weak on this. Let's compare it to the new one. On the new one, we've got much more meat on the contact points. They're nice and clean and they contact evenly. The spring also feels stronger. Now, before I go any further, there's a lot of moisture in here. So I just want to blow all this moisture out. Um, and I think I'm going to have to put a gasket around here to stop water getting in. WD-40 displaces water, so it drives out moisture. It's one of the benefits of WD-40. So just spray that all over. Right, because we want to get rid of all the moisture, dirt, the grease, give it a good clean inside here. And it'd be fine on the coils. With this area nice and clean, we can now install our new contact breaker. Make sure this wire goes in the channel down here. And then this little dowel goes into here in this hole you then get this small screw and that goes in there to hold the wires on and then this one goes in the back and we're going to use this one at the back for adjusting the point gap but you can only do that on this engine when the flywheel is back on so we'll put that in. I'm not going to do it up completely yet because we need to adjust our points gap. So inside our flywheel, we have our cam. This is actually egg shaped, even though it looks completely round, it's egg shaped here. And our switch runs around this surface. And because it's egg shaped, that causes the switch to open and close as it rotates. We've got a little sponge which needs to be oiled up and that's just to keep this surface clean, the surface which the switch runs on or the contact breaker. So just get a little drop of oil and put that on the sponge. It's also worth lubricating the mechanical parts inside the flywheel while we're at it. So just put a drop of oil on these springs. any of the moving components inside here. To refit the flywheel, if you have a look in here, you'll see the keyway and the key on the shaft, they have to line up, you can only go one way round. There we go. And the torque specifications for the flywheel nut are 29 to 36 foot pounds, which is equivalent to about 47 Newton meters. And again, we're gonna to need to lock our flywheel, lock it against the foot peg. Lovely stuff. To help us with the ignition timing, I'm just gonna take the spark plug out by removing the spark plug, you allow the engine to rotate freely without compressing the cylinder. Now we've got two markings on the flywheel here. We've got a T, you can just about see it there. And then we've got an F. T stands for top dead center. And then the F stands for fire. And that's the point at which the contact breaker opens. The magnetic field inside the ignition coil collapses and that causes a spark to jump across the plug. And that's when our engine fires. So that F there is for setting up our ignition timing. 
but before we do anything, we need to set our points gap. So to adjust the points gap, we need the engine at top dead center, and that is this T here on the flywheel. This little lollipop stick has to line up with a mark on the back plate. Because the timing cam's on the inside of the flywheel, we can only adjust the points gap with the flywheel on, so it makes it a little bit difficult as we have to put our feeler gauges through this small hole here, and also a screwdriver for tightening and adjusting the points gap. But I'll try my best to show you what I'm doing through this little gap. Now the points gap is between 0.3 and 0.4 millimeters, so optimal is 0.35. I've got a 0.33 mil feeler gauge here, um, so I'm going to be using this. I haven't got a 0.35, but 0.33 should be absolutely fine. The engine's at top dead centre. If we look through the flywheel, you can see the contact points there and the adjustment screw at the back. This one here. That's the adjustment screw. So I'm going to get my screwdriver in there ready and loosen that off. So the points are loose. You can see them moving around. Let's tighten that up a little bit, just so there's a bit of resistance. And up here, there's a slot <laughs> to move the points. So you get a flat blade screwdriver in this slot. Up here. And if you twist this screwdriver, then you can adjust the points. So I've got it adjusted there so there's a little gap in between the contact points. As we're at top dead centre, we need a gap there. And now I'm just going to nip this screw up. So there you go, you can see that gap in between the points there. It's opening and closing. So at the point where it's fully open, which is there, it's actually a little bit past top dead center. We can get our feeler gauge and just put it in the gap to measure it. Now it's a little bit loose. You can see a little bit loose. So I'm gonna loosen that screw off and just close the gap up a little bit. Okay, that should be about right. We're going to rotate the flywheel now to the F, and it, this is a point where the contact breaker opens and the spark jumps across the plug. So we need to check that at the F, the points are just about to open. The F is in line right now, and you can see the points just start to open on the F. It's on the F there, and then the points separate. So I'd say that's pretty much spot on, but in the next video, I'm gonna be using a timing light to test it, um, and we can confirm how accurate that is. So I'm just gonna nip up those screws inside there. Just give it some choke. Now here's a quick trick for making a gasket. I've got some cereal box cardboard here and some white paint. And I'm just going to get the white paint and put it around my flywheel cover. Now simply turn it around and put it on the card. Push it down. There we go. Flip this over, 
try it out for size. Not bad. And now I'm going to use some Hylamar blue, which is a, a gasket sealing compound. I'll just put some of that onto my gasket. And that'll prevent any moisture or dirt getting in to the flywheel. And on our point, stick it on the flywheel cover. Now you can still see a little bit of the gasket around there. If I'd have spent a little bit more time doing it and made it slightly smaller, you wouldn't see that, but I'm not too worried. Um, it's just to stop any water and dirt from getting in to the flywheel and where our contact breaker is. So let's nip these up. So there we go, I've shown you how to replace the contact breaker, check the point gap and adjust the ignition timing. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use a timing light and we can check to see whether we got that spot on at the point where the contact breaker opens. It should be in line with the F mark on the flywheel. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you then. Cheers guys, bye for now.